Because when we start singing leaning, guess what you're going to do? You're going to lean. So make sure you have someone by you. If someone's not by you, go find someone. Okay? Leaning. Okay? And we're going to sing this together. Talk about leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. But he sends also our, his kids to go be able to be leaning everlasting arms as well to his other kids. I feel bad, right? So we're going to lean on each other. Here we go. Let's sing.
again as our annual business session. Wednesday, thir October 31st, there will be no Wednesday night Bible study because at 6 p.m. our annual Harvest Party Trunk or Treat is getting underway and you can bring uh, donations to the White Barrel that is out there next to the Welcome Center, uh, non-perishable treats and also little tiny toys if you uh, uh, want to do that and you put those in that White Barrel and we'll have those. Um, and please be, please be inviting for that because we have a lot of big stuff Pastor Austin is doing this year. So please be inviting for that. Yes. Bring all the kiddos and everything. So as many people as we can get to do it and uh, have fun. And we're going to have a lot of fun stuff for you guys, okay? Yeah. Well, <laughs> In that guy. <laughs> you might be able to guess our theme for the uh, Harvest Rush. So anyway... Uh, maybe by that. Uh, September 26th is Kiddo's Movie Night. September 30th is Kiddo's Superhero Sunday. And then coming October 13th uh, is our Kids Church Training Seminar. If you'd like to help out at Kids Church, uh, please fill out on the back of the connection card. Uh, and that time, I have not nailed down that time with Pastor Austin, uh, but we want you to, if you want to help out at Kids Church, uh, you don't have to help out every week. You can help out every sixth week. You can help out every fourth week, whatever you want. 
Uh, and uh, what we need you to do is we're going to have a kids training seminar, kids church uh, uh, helper training seminar. And so also November 4th is our fall back breakfast. And so if you uh, fall back, how many of y'all have trouble getting up after you fall back, after you get a bun I mean, fall back? Uh, let's see. I have trouble getting when up. The clocks, you know, when, when the clocks turn back an hour and you gain an hour of sleep, uh, we shouldn't have any problem getting up. Uh, but anyway, that fallback breakfast uh, begins at 8.30 on that morning. And if you'd like to be, be involved with that, see uh, Brother Everett, E-V-A-R-T, Everett. And, uh, and we have Darren and Bridget usually help a few other volunteers. If you'd like to help with the fallback breakfast, please see those folks, uh, and they'll get you signed up. All right? There are also prayer requests and also different things on, on the back of your bullets, and please be sure you do that as well. Uh, any uh, prayer requests and prayer items? We're going to go to the Lord in prayer right quick. Anybody? Yeah. Yes. Pastor Greg. Maybe yes, amen. Good. Pastor Greg Flores. Pray for him. He uh, showed up for a kidney transplant meeting a whole month early. Uh, he got down there, Henry Ford, and she says, What are you doing here? He says, I'm supposed to. He's got North Carolina accent. Well, see us, I'm supposed to be here. <laughs> she says, Well, you're a whole month early. Who told you to be here? And he told said the girl's name. So they tried to get him in, and they couldn't get him in. But uh, anyway, he's. Uh, I think this is one of the last steps for a kidney transplant, so pray for Pastor Greg. Amen. It's a good prayer request. Yes. Sister Ardith. Yeah, good to have Sister Ardith back with us this morning. For she had and she drove today. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. And so continue to pray the Lord's healing and blessing upon her. Uh, I have sent out a couple pictures of a, a bus that we want to get, but I don't have $9,000. So I want God to give us that bus. Amen? Amen? And so I want you to think about that. Um, and it's a 20-passenger bus, and it is uh, uh, got a wheelchair lift, um, but it is, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous bus. And uh, it's not yellow, it's white, um, and it's got green tile floor. And, uh, but anyway, that's what we're praying for, so you all pray for us. Pastor Jared mentioned that a couple weeks ago, and so I found this one on Facebook. I talked to the guy. And I kind of threw me on, threw myself on his mercy, made me thinking that, well, I'll just give it to you. But any, maybe you guys pray, maybe that guy will just message me and give it to us, all right? So that's what we need. Amen? And so... You just got to call him every day and say, you still taking good care of my bus? Yeah. Every day. There you go. And then he'll be eventually like, all right, fine, you can have your bus. I'm done with it. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry? Yeah. I call. Yeah, amen, amen. All right, and then uh, praying for one of my kiddos. Uh, that was one of my kiddos from Stepanski School. Uh, had their tragedy happened in that family this past week, and uh, um, just horrible tragedy. And uh, so let's pray for that family. Um, pray for the little boy especially. Uh, he's uh, got some. He's uh, um, he's got some learning disability plus some emotional disability as well. Um, and so pray for that family. I had some horrible tragedy happen to them this week, and I'll just leave it at that, all right? Anybody else with a prayer item, prayer request? The law. Amen, amen. People that need Jesus, hey. amen. All right, let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for your love towards us. And Lord, I pray that you would meet the needs of everyone here this morning. Those that are hurting, those that are broken, those that are in need, Father, I pray that you meet the need according to your will. And Lord, I pray right now for all the prayer requests that have been made, not only in this room, but in the Sunday school rooms and also in the prayer room. And that will be made throughout the day. Folks that uh, have a need for your hand in their life. I pray for our little guy from Stepanski. Lord, I pray that you wrap your arms around him, comfort him and help him. And even though he may not understand all things that are going on, but Lord, he's going to need you from this day forward for sure. Lord, I pray that you would be with every song that is undone. Be with this preacher uh, as we try to bring you a word. Help us, dear God, to uh, step aside ourselves that you might speak through us. And Lord, we love you and we thank you. And Father, I pray that you would bless the offering today. Bless the gift as well as the giver. And we praise you for it all. In Jesus' name, and God's people said, Amen. 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 Ushers, come on up. Let's all stand together. Let's get around and sing. All right, so now we have, I like to I like to do movement as I sing, because I'm a very ADD person. So for the Lord, I lift your name on high. Can everyone go like this? Can everyone do this? Come on. You're going to do it in your seat. You're going to do it here with me. So when we get to the Lord, I lift your name on high, this is what you got to do. Okay? Everyone got it? All right, let's sing this together. Lord, I lift your name on high. What a 
wonderful song to praise the Lord this morning. Sing the song together. Behold our God. is 
wondrous deeds. Behold. Yesterday, which I'm not a Gen I'm not a Jew. I'm a Gentile. Uh, we believe that uh, we come and worship on Sunday. Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week. Jesus was in the temple on the first day of the week. Amen. Yeah. 
And uh, well, that's why we celebrate the risen Lord. We are here today. Catholicism did not start it on Sunday. You know who started it? The New Testament church. Acts chapter 2. We find the New Testament church. And here we are on Sunday. And so, uh, Seventh day Adventists, believe when you die, if you were a good person and somehow found a way that you trust the Lord, when you die, you're in the grave. That's it. Nothing else happens until the resurrection. And then it sounds like a little hokey Joe Winners junk to me. And there's another one. And so, but if you did not accept Christ and did not do this and did not do that, somehow you just don't wake up. And so you're just dead. And so everything's totally contrary to the scriptures. And so uh, that's a pre-commercial for you. Do your homework. Uh, the Bible is full of warnings for us uh, to be cautious about not allowing uh, false doctrine. Amen. And so just do your homework. Be cautious. Very cautious. Um, anyway, welcome to Liberty. This is uh, part seven. I hope you have been enjoying my series uh, about uh, He is Worthy of Our Worship. And this is part seven of eight. You say, Pastor Buddy, this has almost been like two months. Absolutely. Uh, but I, I tell you what, it's been a, uh, been a joy preaching it. And I hope you've been enjoying hearing it. Uh, as uh, we are diving into another lesson this, uh, this morning as well. Uh, please take your Bibles, turn to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse number 16. And when you get there, you know what to do. All right. Let's see, I'm going to read out of the King James here. All right, if you there, say amen. All right, here we go. Here's our passage of Scripture. We want to share our Scripture text. We'll have a couple more that we'll share in just a little while. So kind of keep your Bible handy as we, as we dive into this. Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 16. Um, I thought it was kind of interesting, by the way, since I was reading out of Jeremiah. Uh, we had just a little uh, family thing out at the Golden Buffet yesterday uh, for uh, Jared's birthday. Um, which is the birthday that never ends. All right. Uh, so anyway, um, anyway, we had a great time. Uh, but anyway, sis Sister Hannah, uh, who is my favorite daughter-in-law, by the way, she says I'm her favorite father-in-law too. So uh, there you go. Uh, anyway, she bought uh, Pastor Jared a shirt, and it says, "What did it say?" Out of Jeremiah, because, because he's got a beard. It's out of judges. It's out, is that out of judges? It's out of judges? All right. But anyway, it reminded me because it starts with a J. <laughs> Like mortal men, and it's talking about Samson, but it has a picture of a dude with a beard on it. The so. guy with a beard. So, anyway, so much for Jeremiah. Today's right. from Jeremiah. Yeah, today's from Jeremiah, though. That's not today's from Jeremiah. All right. Oh, yeah, today's from Jeremiah. Right. Oh, yeah, today's from Jeremiah. Oh, yeah, today's from Jeremiah. There you go. I got a book of the Bible for each Sunday. So, read it. What's it say? It says, Before I formed you in the womb, there wasn't much room in the womb because you're so big. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's your wife you're talking about. You Before I formed you in the womb, did, did we buy this or did she buy it? Oh, you bought it. Oh, sorry. That's your wife that bought that. All right. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Protect life. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. All right. Boy, the train just went off the rails, didn't it? Who started that? I am totally roasting up here, by the way. I did change my jacket to you, by the way, so I, I'm feeling a little bit cooler. But nobody wants to hug me, so because I'll be all nice and sweaty when we get done. All right. Are we there at Jeremiah chapter 15? All right. Uh, anyway, we were eating. And one of the cool things I like to do is I like to, especially when I go to the Golden Buffet, I make a big, giant salad. And yes, I do eat salad. And I made a big, giant salad, and then I go get my jalapeno chicken, and I pour all over the salad. All right, so I got jalapeno chicken, it's not breaded, and I, I put a, uh, uh, some of that bourbon chicken on it, which is not breaded on it, and then I go back and I put just a little bit of that tomato French dressing on top of it, and then I put, uh, put some uh, soy sauce on it. Ooh, so good. Anyway, I'm talking about eating because Jeremiah is talking about eating, all right? And so here we are in this passage of Scripture. Jeremiah says, Thy word... Thy words were found, and I did eat them. 
And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. And so he is worthy of our worship. This is all, well, let's see. Let's jump all the way up here. We're, we're way, way behind. Nice. I got to get way up here. All right. I, all right. Anyway, I'll keep pressing it. When it says part, when it says, uh, part seven, let me know. All right. There's part four. Uh, but we're, today we're going to talk about worship in the Lord. All right. Is there a Technology. Just hit that space bar until we get to part seven or whatever you want, brother. Uh huh. Uh huh. You can blame Pastor Brian Johnson for me using this, by the way. How you doing, Brother Brian? He's the one who learned me how to use this stuff like this, and apparently I didn't pay attention. Y'all talk amongst yourself. Uh -huh. That's from last week, two weeks ago. This is from. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Speed reading. Uh -huh. There we go. Yeah, it's Evelyn Wood, one big giant eyeball. Who remembers Evelyn Wood speed reading? Anybody? No way. All right, here we go. I think this is it. Ooh -hoo. All right. Thank you, Brother Chuck. Everybody want to say, what's up, Chuck? Uh, <laughs> back when uh, Princess Diana was expecting her first child, remember that? Remember that big hub up? Um, one of the, uh, I kind of pay attention to comedians sometimes, and one of the comedians says, I've got the perfect name for the child. And uh, everybody's like, what's it? He says, name the child, because remember it's Prince Charles and Princess Diana. And he says, name it Up, Chuck, and Die. So, so name the baby Up. So it would be Up, Chuck, and Die. All right, never mind. Um, you can edit that part out, right, brother? All right, amen. All right, today we're going to worship the... We're going to worship the Lord in His Word, all right? Now, I just want to give you a free commercial. If you have been living under a rock for the last couple of decades, um, they have taken the Bible out of the government. You remember down in the state of Alabama, uh, where they had the Ten Commandments out on the front, in front of the Supreme Court, and how we find that the, that the court was ordered, the Supreme Court in Alabama, who the Chief Justice was sitting on the, in, in Alabama, they were ordered to remove the Ten Commandments off of the grounds of the Supreme Court. And that was just one thing that is of many that has happened uh, where they've taken the Bible out of government. Uh, I just want to tell you, uh, there are some things that have been left intact. The Supreme Court ruled that in God we trust can stay on our currency. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy about that. Uh, we have Pastor Kent Clark, who uh, pastors Grace Centers of Hope in downtown Pontiac. Uh, he was asked to give the uh, invocation uh, at uh, one, of, one of the congresses down in, in D.C. And uh, there's a picture of him on the web floating around of him standing up there uh, in Congress giving the invocation. A friend of mine who is also a pastor here locally, uh, he was supposed to give the invocation uh, at the state of Michigan up in Lansing. And uh, one thing that he was told that he could not say the name Jesus in his prayer. He did. <laughs> and they probably won't ever ask him back, but I want to tell you something. When someone says that you can't say the name of Jesus because it's offensive, friends, we have entered the slippery slope of going down the rabbit hole. See, they've taken the Bible out of government. They've taken the Bible out of our schools. I remember as a child... Uh, having the Bible given to me by the Gideons. And I always kind of look forward to the little tiny Bibles. And uh, we have the Gideons today. They wind up uh, in Waterford, which is awesome. They stand uh, right out in front of Pierce Middle School. And they stand out over there by Mason Middle School on the sidewalk, which is public. And they pass out Bible to the students as they go by. Uh, that's what it's come to when they were once allowed inside the building. Doesn't it seem logical that they're trying to take the Bible out of the home and even out of the church? You see, even if they're not trying to remove the Bible literally, they're trying to remove the Bible's influence and authority in the home and in the church. 
Dr. Dobson made a statement regarding those individuals out there, and I'll just use one aspect of that. Dr. Dobson says, never allow anyone in your children's life that seeks to confuse your children's sexuality. That's just one thing. But friends, I want to tell you, that's just one thing of many things that the world is out there trying to negate what God has ordained. His word has ordained a marriage between a one man and one woman together forever. I want to tell you, we can wipe out sexually transmitted diseases if we would do with one man, one woman, God's plan for life. We can wipe out AIDS in one generation. But you see, the world says, if it feels good, do it. And this is why it's getting easier and easier to remove God's influence in the lives of men and women, boys and girls. You see, will God allow this to happen? It is happening. Why shouldn't He, if we don't reverence His Word, however, which comes from God we claim to worship? For you in this congregation, it is just as much an act of worship to listen and to respond to God's word as it is sung and in a worship chorus. You're not worshiping the preacher, but only the messenger. You are worshiping the God who gives you the message in his word by listening and responding to what God has to say. Hence my prayer this morning when I said, Lord, please allow me to step aside that you might speak through me. And we find in that passage of scripture in Judges, Jeremiah. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 15, verse number 16. The words were found and I did eat them. What a beautiful picture there. Amen. I found those words and I did eat them. You see, this verse helps us to worship in the word. But both when it is read and preached in the church and when I'm reading it also on my own. And I'll just ask you a question. It's a rhetorical question. It doesn't require an answer. You already know. Do you have a time set aside that you worship God in His Word? If you don't, I would suggest that you do. We live in an age of technology. We live in an age right now where if I was to get kidnapped, you know, that's why they say it's harder to kidnap fat people, so I'm kind of hesitant to lose weight. Um, but if I were to become kidnapped and I had my phone with me, it's easy to track me down because they technology can track me anywhere I go. I remember a Radio Shack got robbed over there on uh, Telegraph Road one day. Kids went in there, 18, 19 years old. They had handguns, and they stole all the phones. They had them put them all in the bags, and they ran off with it. But before they left, they said to the cashier, because the cashier usually has the best phone in the place, give me your phone. So he hands over his phone. So they got thousands and thousands of phones that have not been activated yet, but they got one phone that was activated. It was a nice phone. They had a sack full of cash, a sack full of phones, and a really, really cool phone. All they did was drive one whole block at the, into that neighborhood where the state hospital used to be. And they were set in there. You ever heard the don't count your money, don't count your money at the table? They were sitting there counting their booty. B-O-O-T-Y. They were counting their treasure. And Oakland County Sheriff's rolled up behind them. Uh, uh, put your hands outside the car this time. <laughs> you know how they got caught? Because the cashier's phone was tracked. And so here we have the ability for us as we walk around with these smartphones and we walk around and we have some, you know they said that they're what percentage of people in America read a book, one book a year? 25% read one book a year. So there's not much reading going on. But I tell you what, anywhere you walk, anywhere you look, you can see people like this with these things around. You can capture God's word on this thing. And so take something, and I'll just give you, I'm going to just stay here for a second, is all right? Do you know how many times we touch this phone a day on average? The average American? 
2,300 times. So you at about 6,000? Maybe. <laughs> on the average, brother. They didn't put me in the average. The average then jumps, all right? And so we swipe, we tap, we share over 2,000 times a day. And so in that amount of time, can we stop for just a few moments and worship God by reading His Word? And the beautiful thing is, is that you can tap that, that thing and that you can tap it and it will say, Read it to me. And those of us when, like me, when I go to the old the begats and it has the names of the guys with the consonants, 27 consonants in their name, you can go in and say, read that to me. And they'll read it to you and they will pronounce it for you. And you can act like you have been a Rhodes Scholar because you know how to pronounce all these names. But we need to worship in the Word. Both when it is read... <laughs> And preached in the church and when we are alone with it in God's Word. Let me tell you what worship involves. Worshiping in the Word. Worship involves discovery. Thy words were found, is what he says in that passage. Thy words were found. Anybody ever discover things? I like watching the Discovery Channel. Anybody watch the Discovery Channel? There's a lot of things you can discover on the Discovery Channel. And it's almost redundant. But I want to tell you, we can open up God's Word and we can discover some things. We've all made discoveries. That is that we've all found things or even learned things that have helped us, educate us, and even thrilled us. There's no greater discovery to make than the things that are spoken by God. Let's uh, take our Bibles, turn to the book of 2 Timothy. And I, actually, I'm using my, I got my Bible right here, but I'm using my smartphone so we can mm -hmm. kind of. 2 Timothy what? 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 through 17. Yeah. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Now I'm going to read this from the uh, NIV. And it says, All Scripture. Hmm. Did it say some Scripture? Did it say part Scripture? Or did it say... Well, no, it says Paul's telling Timothy that all Scripture is God-breathed. What does the King James Version use in that? Hey, who's got King James? Read that a lot. Inspiration of God. Amen. It is simply God-breathed. Do you know... That that passage of scripture and the original text is telling us that God spoke. And, and, and can I give you the Greek part of that? And I am not a Greek scholar by any imagination. I'm just, I read after Greek scholar. And so what happens when we speak, our voice, our air passes over our vocal cords and comes out our mouth. And so in the original Greek tense of this reading, in the original parchments, it is referencing that God actually spoke these things, that his breath came out and came over his vocal cords, and that's the way Paul received this word. And this is why we know that his word, that is God's word, that it is God-breathed. No greater discovery than to make the things spoken by God part of our life. You see, God's word is inspired Inspired. Anybody been inspired to do something? All of us have at one time or another. We, uh, at the end of Christmas, uh, as Christmas turns into January, you can go in a Sam's Club and you'll see uh, those coat racks. They're long and they got a handle on one end and then they have a belt thing so if one falls off, you turn it on and it runs it to you. No, it's a treadmill. They have a treadmill uh, there in January and then you'll see those those Tony Lama things in there. And you'll see all kinds of things. Weight loss program, weight loss food, weight loss this, and getting fit, and all those things. You know why? Because at the turn of the year, we want to all be inspired to be a better person for the coming year. But most times all of that gets left behind by January 4th. <laughs> but God's Word is inspired. It is profitable. 
is profitable for teaching us. But let me, let me. Uh, but let me read that passage in King James, the, the whole passage there, 16 and 17 for me. Read right. really a good law. Your pastor is a little better. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. <coughs> Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. Thank you, sis. You see, it is profitable for teaching us doctrine. What is doctrine? Pastor Buddy just shared with you just a little bit ago regarding false doctrine. All right? There are a lot of false doctrine out there. And I shared with you a couple weeks ago on bank tellers and how they teach bank tellers how to recognize counterfeit bills. It's that they teach them what the real thing is. And so what we need to do is understand what the real thing is. Remember Coca-Cola had that, that song? It's the real thing. You remember Coca-Cola? All right. And so what we need to do is identify what the real thing is. We have within our possession the real thing. And friends, if someone comes to you teaching something different than this, it is false doctrine. And many times one of the tools of the enemy is to take God's own word and twist it to make it be something other than what it is. That's why Jehovah Witnesses can come to your door. Rap, rap, rap. And they want to take your Bible. Do you have a Bible? Oh, certainly. And then they take your Bible from you. And they want to open it up and pervert God's Word. Can I give you a free commercial? You don't have to talk to them. Send them to my house. All right? Or Jared's house. All right? You don't have to talk to them. You can say, thank you very much. I'm not interested. I believe in a risen Savior, Jesus Christ, who stands at the right hand of God. And I'm waiting for him to come back one day. I hope you one day will accept him as your savior. Have a blessed day. Amen. And so what we need to do is understand this, that it is profitable for teaching us doctrine. And as General Madness, we are all millennialists. We are uh, Arminian in doctrine. We believe that God sent his only begotten son for all the world. And it takes us to accept his death payment on the cross that we might be saved. But God sent his son to die for all. That is part of our doctrine. We believe that we ought to practice the, the, uh, the, the communion. We, we believe we ought to practice one of the things that we do is baptism. We don't believe baptism saves you, but we believe if you are saved, you will be baptized. And there are a lot of doctrines out there that are teaching that baptism is the way of salvation. Jesus is the way of salvation. His blood is the only thing that can wash away sins. Just like that old song. So it's profitable for teaching us doctrine. It's also profitable for reprimanding us for our own good, or that word reproof. Sometimes there are people who sit in the audience and they'll say, Amen, Pastor Buddy! And then sometimes they'll quietly say, Oh my, Pastor Buddy! You know why? Or they might be sitting in Sunday school class, they say, Amen, Sister Leslie, you teach us this, and then she'll get on something that... Oh, and they say, oh my, Sister Leslie. They might be in Reverend Knight's class and say, hey man, Pastor Knight, you preach it, brother. You just, you hit it. You go, go, go. And then he'll say something that is in the Word that kind of pricks their heart a little bit. They say, oh my, Pastor Knight. Or maybe you're in your own private study and you're sitting there and you're reading and God's Word speaks to you and you're like, I need to change. That's one of those reproof helps us, encourages us. None of us, do you, who likes to be told that you're wrong? Anybody? Who likes, yeah, one, I had one person like to be told wrong. There's one fellow who I enjoyed watching on television for years and years and years, and he was never, ever wrong, except for one time. His name is the Fonz. Anybody? <laughs> you can't hear it, but everyone. Hey. 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 There's one particular episode, and I know it's fiction. 
But I want to tell you, this is kind of speaks to the truth of it. Fonzie was never wrong. But then there was one time, and I don't know if it was Richie's mom or something, and so he was kind of having to eat crow. And he says, I was woo, woo, woo. No, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I was woo, woo, woo. You were wrong, yeah, that. <laughs> None of us like to say that we were wrong. None of us like to say that we could use a little tuning up. But I tell you, God's word will tune us up. God's word will put new plugs in us. He'll put new wires and he'll put a new rotor cap on us. It will run like a fine-tuned machine. That's what God's word does for us. It helps us. It helps us and encourages us. And when we're failing, how many of you want to continue to fail if God's word will help you not fail? I want to be able to have God's word help me not fail. And that's what it does. That's what Paul is telling Timothy here. It's profitable for reprimanding us for our own good. I never understood it as a daddy. When my dad got that belt down, and he, he says these words, this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. I'm like, you a lying dog. <laughs> is it hurt? Anybody ever grabbed the other end of the belt? Anybody? Just me, right? You, what happens when you grab the other end is it's coming around? He's like, what you going to do now, boy? <laughs> None of us like to be reproved. None of us like to say that we had made a mistake. But God's word is profitable, which means it helps us to for, it's for our own good. When I would get a whooping or I get grounded or I get talked to, it was for my own good. My parents were not meaning me harm. It was for my own good. When they said, look both ways before you cross the street, and if I got caught not doing that, and I got grounded for my bicycle. You know why? Because it was for my own good. We were telling, uh, we were on a walk with uh, um Emily and Sarah, and we uh, were walking around the block, and GM has this big grassy hill behind our property, and we're going to take the kids up there uh, and, and walk on the grassy hill. And um, We were trying to share with the kids how important it was, and Columbia is a very busy road, if you all haven't watched my Facebook page. Um, but Columbia is a very busy, busy road, and people do not obey the speed limit at any, at any occasion. And so we're trying to explain to the kids as we're walking them, and me and Miss Judy, we, I got Emily on one hand, and she's got Emily on the other hand, and Kelsey's got Sarah. And we're explaining to them the importance of never, ever going in the road. And the important statement that I made to them is that it will make you graveyard dead. And of course, Emily's like, I have no idea what you just said. But Miss Judy says is that you get hit by a car, and then we'll never, ever see you again. She understood that. And so the important thing for us is that Paul is telling Timothy that the Word of God helps us be better people. I don't know anybody in this room who wouldn't want to be a better person after they leave today than when they came. I hope you become a better person today by looking into God's Word. It's profitable also for changing us, for correction, making us that person who used to do this and now we're doing this because we read God's word. It's also profitable for helping us live godly lives, instructions and in righteousness. Let me share with you, I put something up yesterday from A.W. Tozer. I'm a huge fan of A.W. Tozer. And... Uh, let me share it with you. It's just a real quick quote. Some of you have seen it already. It simply says this. We cannot afford to let down our Christian standards just to hold on the... the, the, the uh, let me do that again. We cannot afford to let down our Christian standards just to hold the interest of people who want to go to hell and still belong to a church. Now that preach. 
But what we find when God's word is profitable for us, we will hold on to our Christian standards. And if we find out that we need to adjust something, God's word will point that out for us. Amen. Now, I want to be cautionary tale to you as well. Sometimes it's not the individual's right to go up to somebody else and say, my standards say this and you're not meeting my standard. In another church that I attended, I pastored and I, was, I served in many different capacities. And it will never happen here, by the way. Young lady who showed up and she had really short shorts. Extremely short shorts. And a deacon's wife in the sanctuary thought it appropriate to a first time visitor telling her that she couldn't wear those here anymore. That was W R O N G, wrong. You know who changes people? Jesus. She says, I'll never come back to this church ever again. I will tell you, however, if she was allowed to sit under the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ, God will not only change you on the inside, He'll change you on the outside. Amen. And in His Word, if she had just been given half a chance, she could have dived into this beautiful book and she would have been everything to please God and not to please man. Amen? That's what God's Word does for us. Paul tells us here in this passage of Scripture why we should want to discover God's Word. Following God's Word will help us become more perfect as the day goes along. That word perfect is simply becoming complete or more mature. It also equips us to be ready to do good works which God has for us to do. You see, if you approach this, this book right here as an act of worship, you will make discoveries beyond your wildest imagination. There's going to be many joyful discoveries in this book. There's going to be also sorrowful discoveries in this book. There are also many convicting discoveries in this book. But I will tell you as well, there are many life-changing discoveries in this book. But each one of us has to make discoveries for ourselves. Pastor Buddy can stand and preach week in and week out, and I'll be teaching again at 6 p.m. tonight. That's a free commercial. And then we'll be teaching again on Wednesday night, our Wednesday night Bible study with Reverend Knight and myself. And then also we got a bunch of crazy children and all those things that go along with it. We have a cool thing that takes place on Wednesday night. But I want to tell you something. Each one of us, most of all, will have to make most of our discoveries ourselves. You'll only make discoveries as you read His Word at home. As you read His Word in church. If you want to make discoveries, that's the way to do it. You see, in church, if you stop worshiping God after the hymns and prayers, you will not find yourself making many discoveries. I admit to you this morning, <clears throat> by my own admission, that not every one of my sermons is a gem. Hey, I'm glad you didn't say amen. <laughs> I kind of paused for a second. No amen. Say amen. Praise the Lord. But if you're looking to make discoveries out of God's word as an act of worship, you'll find jewels. And that's that other people might miss. You need to desire in your heart to find God's Word. So worship in the Word involves discovery. <laughs> worship in the Word also involves digestion. Remember the passage of Scripture? He says, I ate your Word. I'm consuming your Word. 
I have a pastor friend of mine. He got invited over to a, a pastor who's in heaven now, Lester Roloff. He got invited over to Lester's house. Um, he's, he, my, my pastor friend was preaching a revival at Lester Roloff's uh, church. And he got invited over to his house. And they were southern folks. And he said there was a big plate of this fried in the, uh, in the, on the center of the table. And he said it, it looked good. And so he got him a big old spoonful and put it in his plate. He said he cut off a piece and he put it in his mouth. It was fried, had breading on it and stuff. And then he says, and he began to chew. And he said it got bigger. And it got bigger. And it got bigger. He didn't know what it was. And so he says he didn't dare try to swallow it. Freddie choked to death at Lester's, at Lester's table. And so he took him a napkin and he spit it out in a napkin. And it turns out it was pig intestines. <laughs> Some of y'all call them chitlins. <laughs> and so he took it and he had spat that out. He, he was not able to die just then. I said that to say this. Thy words were found and I did eat them. Every Sunday, Sunday school teachers Myself, or sometimes we'll have a guest preacher preaching. We serve up God's word to you. During the week, your Bible might sit there waiting to be open. Your responsibility, friend, is this. To eat and to digest the word of God that is set before you. Not only just today, but every single day as we walk with the Lord. I mean... Give you some basics here. Here are some practical ways for you to digest the Word of God. I hope this is helpful for you today. Number one, go tell Pastor Buddy everything you ever did. Absolutely not. I don't want to hear it. Number one thing you need to do, confess any known sin that you have in your life to the Lord. Amen. I truly don't want to hear it. You say, Pastor Buddy, I need you to pray for me about such, sir. I'll pray for you. But I tell you what, I can't do anything about your sin. He can. Amen? Amen. So confess any known sin that you have to the Lord. And if you have any problem with me or any other speaker, I, I, I encourage you to get it straightened out. I, I'm a much better preacher in your eyes if you're not angry or upset with me. Second of all, ask God to help you. Or third of all, ask God to help you get something from Him. And so when you get ready to dive into this book, when you get ready to come in here, that's why we pray, is that God might open up His Word to our hearts that we might walk out better people than when we came in. So ask God to help you get something from Him. Third, fourth of all, pay attention. Strive to follow the speaker, or even in your own reading. There's a preacher who I, I, he's a good preacher. He preached, you all would, you would, anyway. I, he preached a solid hour and a half. And he'd hold on at the podium, and he would talk right into the microphone. And then every word that he would speak, then he would go, He was a dynamic pre preacher as far as I got. I learned a lot from him. But I tell you what, you really had to pay attention because it's almost like watching paint dry. But I want to tell you that we need to pay attention, strive to follow the speaker or the preacher or the teacher. Try to follow what you're reading. Also, be open. Be ready to be blessed. Be challenged. Be ready to be comforted. Be ready to be corrected. There are some things that God's word will help us do. And here's a toughie. Be submissive. Nobody wants to be submissive hardly anymore. You can't tell me what to do. You're not my dad. <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. That's my mama's job. And sometimes the child says, you can't tell me what to do. 
Oh, you are my dad. <laughs> but if there's a conflict between what is the word of what is the word of God and what you're doing or thinking, you know who's right. Amen. Did I did I get that right? Did you understand that? If there's a conflict between what you're doing and what God says about it, you know who's right. Something else we can do is memorize. Meditate upon God's Word. You see, the more you meditate on a passage, the more God will speak to you about it. I've brought this up before several times, and I want you to understand Psalm 23 has been around for over 4,000 years. You know how many preachers have probably preached out of that passage? Over 4,000 years. How many sermons have been preached? Probably millions of times. And did you know it's being able to be preached millions of times because God's Word is alive. And every time you read Psalm 23, you're going to find a little nugget of something new. Every time you listen to a preacher preach on the 23rd Psalm, you will hear something new. Every time you hear someone preach on John 3.16, there may be a preacher that doesn't stop at John 3.16 and then goes on to John 3.17 and will find many new truths if we'll just pay attention. And so worship in the Word involves us to digest it, not just to get it in our mouth and then when we walk out this door, spit it off in a flower bed to digest His Word. When we're sitting at home and we got the word open on our lap and we're reading his word, don't, don't just close the book up and forget about what you read. When you close the book, say, God, help me that I might learn something today from what I read. Eat his word. And worship also in the word involves delight. Thy words were found and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of mine heart. There's not too many happy people on planet Earth anymore, I'm persuaded. You know that? All you got to do is look at... I think social media has been the worst thing that ever happened on planet Earth right now. And that's, my, that's the truth. I don't put stuff on social media too much as far as taking a huge stance on junk anymore because I'm, a, I'm cautious about offending people. Now, I will stand on the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And, that, and I make no apologies for it. But you know what? For stuff that don't matter... Like, who's the president? I got friends who voted for the other guy. And I got friends who voted for this guy. I tell you what, my friendship with you is more important than something that's going to end in the next four or eight years. That matters more to me. My love for you and your love for me. And I want to tell you something. That when it's all said and done, God's going to take care of it anyway. Amen? Amen? A lot of people put their faith and trust in somebody. I put my faith and trust in him. Amen? I'll make my stance on abortion on the, on the, on, I'm going to run this right I'll take my stance on abortion I'll take my stance on marriage uh, between uh, same sex people my stance is God's stance is one man one woman I'll take my stance a whole lot of ways but sometimes it's almost like Paul said I'll not eat the sacrificial meat if it's going to offend somebody because it really don't matter you know what I'm talking about We need to have some delight. We find here in the psalm. Let's take our Bibles, turn to the book of Psalms. We, we got a minute. Psalms chapter 19. And we're going to jump around there in just, in just a little bit. Amen. All right. There's some things that bring joy and rejoicing to my heart, friends. All of these things should have second place to my Lord and His Word. They should be the joy and rejoicing of my heart. Psalms 119, verse 47 says this. Let's see if I can get this whole thing here. No, 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 back up there. Psalm 119. 
The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right and giving joy to my heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure and enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. But them, your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Did you catch that? But keeping them is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words out of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. We find there that the Bible converts the soul. God's word is used by God's spirit to convict us. God's word makes simple folks like us wise. Amen. Amen. Our, our, I like that country song. I'm just a simple man. But God's word will make us wise. God's word is right and brings joy to our hearts. God's word is pure. It gives us discernment. God's word inspires us to godly fear. God's word is true and righteousness. God's word is more valuable than gold and sweeter than honey. God's warned me of his word in his word. And when I obey God's word, there is great reward. That's what God's word does for us. It allows us to delight. When the Bible becomes the joy and the rejoicing of your heart, you will want to read it. You will want to hear it preached. And you will want to remember it and think about it. That's what God's Word does for us. So the worship in the Word involves delight. I hope you delight in reading His Word. I was looking through a few things yesterday. <clears throat> Did you know you have to use your birth certificate now to get your driver's license renewed? Anybody? Yeah. All right. So Pastor Jared didn't know where his birth certificate was at. And so I had uh, had one. And so you get that? All right. Yeah. All right. Um, and so he had to go get his driver's license renewed. And um, tell who he is. And I lost my train of thought. I was going at. But what happens is that you'll want to remember and think on when you have studied His Word. I'll get back to where I, that rabbit I was running right there. But the Word also involves distinction. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me in joy in my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Yeah, let me back up there. I just remember what my point was going to be, all right? You allow a preacher sometimes to lose his train of thought. You know, I can remember the words to every song from the 1970s, but I can't remember what I went into the kitchen for, all right? Um, I said that to say this, is that I was digging through the file, and I found his verse tip. I also found a letter uh, that my daughter had written when my mama had died. And it was just so precious and so sweet. I, didn't, I had read it before. I didn't dare open it for, I would, I would just, uh, my emotion would be overrun. God's word challenges our emotion. And we can delight in his word. Then it also involves distinction. The word of God should be the joy and rejoicing of my heart because of who I am. Jeremiah says that he was called by God's name. That means Jeremiah belonged to God. I hope you are a child of God today. Do you belong to him? 
you do belong to God if the following things are true. First of all, you have admitted that you are so bad a sinner that you could never save yourself. Have you admitted that already? How many of y'all were a bad sinner? You all better raise your hand. You better. Anybody who didn't raise your hand, you need to move away because the lightning bolts were coming down. Yeah. Well, I was a good sinner. <laughs> yeah. We need to be able to admit that we were a so, our, we were so bad a sinner that we could never save ourselves. Amen? Amen. Here's some other things that is a, is a thing that you, is a hint that you belong to God. Second of all, that you have heard and that you understood that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for your sins and He paid for them all. Amen. Amen. And then here's another sign that you belong to God. And you have sincerely received Jesus Christ in your life as your only hope for forgiveness and everlasting life. That's another indication that you belong to God. And then lastly, upon receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior, your life has been changed by the Spirit of God. Those are clear indications that you belong to Him. You see, if you belong to God, you are called by the name of God, the Son. His name is Christ. Your name is Christian. Amen. This truth is even more exciting when you consider that if you have trusted in Christ to be your Savior, you have received that new birth and you have been born into the family of God. Also, you have been adopted into God's family and have been given all the rights and privileges as a child of God. And because of that distinction, that the Lord God of hosts the God of this universe, the God who cut the Grand Canyon, the God who hung the stars, stars in the sky and hangs the sun up there, that God has chosen to call you by His own name. What He has to say to us should be of the utmost importance. We are His kids. And this is Daddy's love letter to us. It's an eloquent distinction to be called his child. Amen? Have you ever received a letter that you have read over and over and over again and hung on, hung on every word because it came from someone you loved and cared about? I hope so. Because you are God's child and called by God's name and you should hang on every word that comes out of this book. It is His love letter to you. This is a challenge this morning for you and I that we would get closer to God by eating His book. Let's all stand. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're inviting the musicians to come. Father, we love you and we thank you. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to folks' hearts, Christian folks that maybe have neglected your word, I pray that there would be a prayer saying, Lord, help me to make time to read your word. Help me when I dive into your word that I would understand your word. Help me that I might live by your word. There are a lot of promises in your word. I ask that those promises would be bestowed upon me. Father, I pray that there's someone here that is unsaved. They don't know you as their Abba Father that they would come and accept your death payment on the cross, your son's death payment on the cross for their sins. Whatever the need might be, that this altar might have folks seeking your face. Maybe it's praying and prayer rededication and saying, Lord, I've neglected your word. I've neglected this love letter. If you're like that this morning, Father, I pray that you help them find their place here. In Jesus' name, every head bowed, every eye closed, we invite you to come on the very first moment. Come on now.
every eye closed, you say, Pastor Buddy, boy, I really need to do a better job reading this word. I feel like that. With this preacher, I got my hand up. Say, Pastor Buddy, I'd really like to be a better steward of reading God's word. If you like that this morning, slip your hand up right quick and put it back down. Yes, 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 yes. While people were praying, everybody in their seats, standing reverently, quietly. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Would you be willing to take a pledge this morning? You don't have to say it out loud, so I'm going to say this. I pledge to be a better steward.